Number one, Clemson. Number four, Notre Dame. It is here, here we go. It's time. And we have broken it down. We have given you our keys to the game. We've given you the matchups to watch. All at irishbreakdown.com. Make sure you absolutely. check it all out. No doubt. And we, we've got videos for you. We've got content on the website. We are – we have analyzed this one out. <laughs> and it is now prediction time, mm-hmm. Brian. Uh, mm-hmm. I have waffled back and forth so much on this game. It depends on which way the wind is blowing as to which way I'm going to go in this video. Uh, but I think I've got it narrowed down. I've listened to you. I've watched the film. I've gone back over Notre Dame. I think I've got a pretty good idea of which way this one pans out. I'm going to let you bat lead off. Tell me how you think this game is going to shake out on Saturday night. You know, Vince, I'm, when I do predictions, I, I predict more of what I think should happen more so than what I think will happen, which is why I'm not a millionaire based on my winnings in Vegas. Uh, <laughs> you know, for me, I think this game is going gonna, is gonna to play out well for Notre Dame. I, I think that Notre Dame matches up a lot better against this Clemson team than they did in 2018. And I think you can make a case that this Notre Dame team isn't even as good as the 2018 team was overall. But I think, especially on offense, I think that 2018 team was, was more explosive offensively. I think this team is even better on defense. Uh, at least they have been so far. Uh, I think this this Notre Dame team, this 2020 Notre Dame team, has more difference makers in the back seven on defense. Yeah. And I think this Notre Dame team is much better along the defensive line, offensive line, offensive, uh, yeah. than it was in 2020, 2018. And mainly because four of the five starters in that game are still at Notre Dame. Yeah, exactly. And they're all better players. They've all progressed to a to a level of to a certain degree. Uh, and we've seen a couple of them, Liam Eikenberg and Aaron Banks, have really taken their games to the next level. And I think Robert Haynes, he's just, you know, a very steady, overlooked player. Tommy Kramer's been kind of up and down, but Jarrett Patterson is is turning into, you know, one of the five to ten best centers in the country. So this is – and then, you know, Clemson in 2018 had three first-round draft picks on the defensive line. And, and I don't mean – we talked about this in our podcast, Vince, our Ice Breakdown podcast. And I don't mean like they were freshmen and then two, three years later they developed into first-round picks. I mean is they played against Notre Dame in December, and in April they were first-round picks. You, right. you know what I mean? Like they were right. veterans. I think Clemson probably has another three first-round picks on their current defensive line, but two of them are true freshmen. True and the freshmen, other one yeah. is not playing, Tyler Davis, who's going to be hurt. So, and then you, you look at Clemson, Trevor Lawrence isn't playing. They have two starting linebackers aren't going to be playing. Tyler Davis isn't playing. It, it, it's like, if you're Notre Dame, if, if you don't, if you can't win this one at home, when's it going to happen? When is the yeah. big game going to happen? So uh, I think you're going to see the defense really play well. I think they're going to make, they're going to force DJ Uangalele into enough mistakes that they're going to be able to take advantage of. They're going to be able to keep the points down. They're going to keep it in the twenties. I think the Notre Dame offense, if Ian Book comes out early and he's hitting throws and he's getting into a rhythm and, and he's not being rattled by the pressure because I think Clemson's going to come after him early. If he's able to do they that should. and if the, if the, they should and if the playmakers are doing what they need to do, I think Notre Dame can score enough to win this game. I mean, look, the best – Notre Dame's offense has been disappointing all season. Their best game came against the best defense they've played. And that was against Pitt. So right, I can't right. figure this team out. You yeah, know, you, that makes two um, of us. You can score 12 points on Louisville's terrible defense. And then a week later, you hang 38 offensive points. Because again, I'm talking about what the offense did. Right. You hang up 38 points on Pitt. You know, you scored more points against Pitt the first half than you did against Louisville in, in you know, first quarter and a half than you yeah. did against Louisville in four quarters. And then, of course, once the defense forced a couple turnovers, the offense took advantage and turned three short fields into 21 points, and the right. game was over. Uh, I think that the defense and the special teams are going to give Notre Dame at least two opportunities of relatively short fields. Uh, you know, whether that doesn't necessarily mean a 25, you know, but a 40 to 50 yard field, I think the offense has to get at least 10 points out of that. Uh, I think that the run game is going to be good enough if the offensive line uh, can pass protect and if Ian Book can get the ball out and give his playmakers a chance to, to, to get the job done. And I think Tommy Reese is going to have a good enough game plan early uh, to allow his best players to get the ball and to make plays. And I think it's going to come down to the fourth quarter. I think Ian Book's going to get an opportunity in the fourth quarter to silence all the doubters like me uh, who have talked about for two years now how he doesn't have any big wins, how he hasn't played well in big games, because those are things are all true. Uh, and, and it's going to be a situation where Ian Book is going to finally 
get an opportunity. And he had it last year against Georgia and didn't take advantage. I think this year he does. I think this year he keeps his, his home on un- – and this is crazy, he's never lost a game at home. Isn't that the wildest thing? Really? Ian Book's never lo- – the last time Notre Dame lost a home game was against Georgia in 2017. And he wasn't – yeah, he didn't, yeah. he didn't start that game. No, he didn't. He didn't play in that game. And, and so, I, did he hold that game? Was he the holder back then? I don't. But I'm not. I'm not blaming him for that game. They. they no. No. Points. You know they lost to they lost to Georgia on the road. They lost to Michigan on the road, and they lost to to Clemson in the Cotton Bowl. So he's yet to lose a home game, and I don't think that starts this weekend. I think Ian's going to do what he needs to do to make enough plays to win, and I'm predicting a 27 to 24 Notre Dame win with Ian Book either leading a touchdown drive to put him ahead, or him leading a field goal drive to kind of get the win. I think that's what we're going to see from Ian Book in this game he's going to get that giant monkey off of his back uh and Notre Dame is going to get a win in year 11 that Brian Kelly has not been able to get and Brian Kelly's gonna I think probably let a lot of people like me know about it which I am <laughs> I would too to. I, I am would, looking I, forward to it I hope that yeah. he does because yeah, this is no the doubt. kind of game you need to win Vince to, to take that next step as a program yeah and I don't care if they don't have who look so they don't have Trevor Lawrence well the last time they had a five-star freshman quarterback Clemson, they Trevor won a Lawrence. national title. Yeah, it was Trevor right? Lawrence. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, they're missing some guys, but they, they recruit well enough to where when, when one guy goes down, they're just replacing him with another stud recruit right? Uh, and young player. So, uh, and, you know, you don't think Notre Dame would love to have Kevin Austin and Braden Lindsay healthy for this game? You know, so Notre Dame is not exactly uh, 100% healthy either. Uh, right. So, so this, there's, there's no excuses for either team, and especially for Notre Dame. But I do think, Vince, I think the pressures on Notre Dame is greater now. Than it was oh yeah before. oh yeah i don't think there's any pressure on clemson right now no I, in because this they game, get a I rematch re- no. they know if we lose yeah. this game we don't have trevor we have ex- we have all the the, yes. the things we can say no trevor lawrence no tyler davis you know no james skalski no mike jones uh on the road you know and then we get a rematch and and that's going to be a much healthier <laughs> trevor lawrence led clemson yeah. football team so yeah there's there's no pressure there's always pressure when you're the number one team right of course but there's not the normal pressure of you know, hey, we, we've got to win this game. In the past, Clemson couldn't – if Clemson lost a game in the regular season last year, I don't think they'd have made the playoff because there was no team good enough that they were going to play in the title game. That would give that them would the kind of credibility. It, yeah. Sure. Now, if you lose to this really good Notre Dame team, as long as Notre Dame doesn't choke in the next four games, you're going to get a rematch against at least a top ten team, at, at, at best a top three team. Yeah. And so – uh, I think it, Clemson knows, like, you know, hey, don't, let's just go do what we do. Let's let's play loose. And I think you're going to get a good performance from Clemson. I just think Notre Dame's experience is just going to be enough for them to to finally get it done. What do you think, Vince? Well, you know, I'm excited about this game. And like I said, I, I've gone back and forth. At the beginning of the week, I was predicting Clemson to win. But the more and more I dig into it, the more and more I listen to you, which I don't know why I do that. I should not <laughs> be listening to you. Um but the more Good promotion. Thanks, Vince. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, I the, the more and more we we dissect it and the more uh, we go over the matchups and and the, the people that are out for Clemson. And I think the phrase of the week is if not now, when? Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, that, that that that's really what it comes down to. And I, I do think the cards are lined up for Notre Dame to win this game. I really do think that I. I think the defense is going to play very, very well. I, I agree with you that if they can hold Clemson in the 20s, uh, and I, I low 20s for me, uh, that that is a very good sign for Notre Dame. The offense, I'm, I'm a little worried about the offense, but mm-hmm. the one matchup that I didn't talk about uh, in our matchup video that is something I'm, you can't really keep your eye on it, but it's Tommy Reese versus Brent Venables. I mean, this mm-hmm. is big boy football for a first-year coordinator, right? And it, it is going to be very interesting to see his play calling, his game plan. Uh, and I realize he doesn't put it together himself, okay? Uh, but he's the but, offensive coordinator. But he's the it, offensive it's, coordinator. It's primarily his responsibility. A- absolutely. At, at the end of the day, it, it's his name in the paper, right? right. So he, it, it, that matchup between those two, I think, is – one of the best matchups of the game of guys that aren't playing. Right. So mm-hmm. it's um, the most important. I would yeah, say. Yeah, no doubt. Sure. So can the offense do what it needs to do to back up what I think the Notre Dame defense is already going to do. Mm-hmm. Okay. I don't have the utmost confidence that Notre Dame is going to put it in the end zone enough times, but I do have the confidence that they're going to get close enough where they're going to kick a bunch of field goals. Mm-hmm. 
I think I think Jonathan Doerr has three field goals in this game. Um, I, I think they get it into the end zone a few times. Uh, but I think I think they win this on the leg of Jonathan Doerr. And I think it would be awesome if it was a last-second kick, like you mentioned, with Ian Book driving them down. Because I would love to see, the, you know, uh, a remake of, of Steve Young winning the Super Bowl, right, where they pull the mm-hmm. monkey off of his back. I think that would be apropos f- for Ian mm-hmm. Book. I would love to see that. My prediction score-wise is 23-21 okay. uh, Notre Dame. So you're I, I seeing think... two touchdowns and then three field goals yes, sir. for, for yep. John the door. Okay. Yep, I am. And uh, like I said, if Notre Dame pushes it into the end zone a few more times than I'm anticipating, mm-hmm. that's fantastic. I, do, I have more confidence in this defense because before – I said Clemson was going to score 28, and I backed mm-hmm. it off a touchdown. I think Notre Dame can keep them to scoring three touchdowns. And I have a lot of confidence in this defense. It's whether or not the Notre Dame offense can pull its weight. I think they can. I think this is the time for them to do it. I'm excited about it, and I think Notre Dame walks away with the victory. I think, Vince, too, you bring up a, good, you bring up a really good point, and you talk about this. Clemson in 2018, if they got into the red zone, it was going to be impossible to keep them out because they had 6'4", Justin Ross, 6'4", T. Higgins, right. and then they could run the ball really well. Sure. I think I could see a scenario in which even if Clemson moves the ball, as long as Notre Dame limits the long touchdowns, limit the yes. 30, 40 yard touchdowns. If you let them get into the red zone, that field is shortened. And now all of a sudden they don't have a T Higgins to throw that fade route to. They don't have a Justin Ross to throw that fade route to. And they're not really great at running the football. Now you're in a situation, if you're Notre Dame, maybe you hold them to a bunch of field goals. Maybe it's maybe Clemson gets five scores in this game, but instead of them being four touchdowns and field goal or five touchdowns, it's, two field goals and, and three touchdowns, yeah. kind of like what you're predicting for Notre Dame. And if that happens, that's where I think Notre Dame will have a chance to, to be in this. And I think the big key for Notre Dame that will most be uh, most impact this game where Notre Dame can win this game, because I think the best thing for Notre Dame would be is to, to win this game convincingly. And, and I sure. think that's how when you look at what a win would mean for Notre Dame, a, a win for Notre Dame is great either way. I, I don't care if it's, 12 to 10 a win over Clemson <laughs> sure. is a win over Clemson absolutely it's huge uh and I will not be one of the people trying to downplay oh well they didn't have this person that person whatever you'll but, hear it nationally but I don't well, think you'll I don't, hear it that's locally. fine you know yeah. th- they'll get their chance to, to play but that's the big key is you if you win this game close and then get beat convincingly when you get the rematch in in, in December in the ACC title game then then people will dismiss this loss or yeah. this victory for Notre Dame yeah, I think it, 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 it's got to, if it, I think, I think if, I think Notre Dame is capable if things fall their way uh, of, of beating Clemson somewhat convincingly. And that's a like 31 to 20, you know, I'm not yeah, predicting it be, because I think Clem, yeah. it's, it's more of a, if the offense can get hot early and get some early scores, put Clemson behind, this isn't Boston college. Right? That's exactly right. This yeah. is a different defense. This is a different animal yes. than what you faced against Boston College. And I think that that's when you, if you're Notre Dame, you can start saying, hey, you, you've got a chance to pull away. Because I think I'm not predicting a close Notre Dame or a, a convincing Notre Dame win. Okay. I'm, I'm just not. I, that to me would be disrespectful to Clemson. Uh, just to me, that yeah. it would be. Sure. Um, no, I you get know, that. Uh, it, I'm just saying. If they want to eliminate some of the, well, you won because of this excuse, this excuse, then you, you need a convincing victory. Sure. If they don't get that, I'm not going to crush them for it. Like I said, beating Clemson's beating Clemson. I don't care yeah. what the score is. However, no if they want their resume to look even better, it needs to be a convincing win in this game. And then in, if you do lose in the ACC title game, close. it needs to be competitive. Has to be. Yeah, if you absolutely. do that, then I think Notre Dame's a playoff team. Because I don't yeah. see any Pac-12 getting to the playoff. Nope. Uh, they're only playing seven games anyway, and that's inc- talking about the team that wins the league, and that's assuming they don't have any games canceled. Washington's already had a game canceled. Their game <laughs> against this weekend against I think Cal has been canceled. Um, so they're not going to have Big enough. Big Twelve isn't getting anybody in. No, the Big Twelve's already done. I mean, Oklahoma State yeah. losing this weekend, and Kansas State losing this weekend, and Kansas State was going to. Ha- I mean, the only way Kansas State was getting in is that there was a bunch of two loss, you know, number you sure. know, number two teams in in, in there. Uh, they're done. Texas isn't even if Texas wins out and goes ten and two, they're not getting in. So the Big Twelve's done. So now you have the Big Ten, and, and again, that that only works if they don't have canceled games. You know, yeah, Ohio State goes true. seven and zero, oh, and Notre Dame's 
11 and one, you're going to put Ohio State at 7 0 against them. Or let's say you've got two SEC teams. Let's say Florida beats Georgia this weekend, which we'll have a, a, a game prediction for that on the website and note at uh, irishbreakdown.com, by the way. Um, and then, you know, then let's say Florida beats Alabama and you got two one loss SEC teams. You're going to take one of those teams out and put in a, a 7 and 0 Ohio State or an 8 and Ohio State. I just, I don't, I don't see it. And I think Notre Dame's in the same situation. As long as you beat Clemson once. Yes. And this is going to be your best chance to do it. And then no your doubt. loss is competitive. I think, I think Notre Dame is, is going to be a playoff team. Well, and I, and I think just from a pragmatic standpoint, winning this game allows Notre Dame to control their destiny, yeah. right? I mean, if they lose this game, then they have to all of a sudden, not only do they have to win out, but now you have to hope North Carolina beats Miami mm-hmm. so that you're not relying on a computer to put mm-hmm. you into the ACC right. championship. Which I think they will. I, I, let me rephrase. I don't, I'm not saying that I think North Carolina is going to beat Miami. I think someone's going to beat Miami. I mean, Friday. I so. ten, I, if you're watching this video on Friday, tonight Miami plays at NC State. Miami, to me, is not a really good football team. But their schedule benefits from the fact, to sure. your point, the two teams we're talking about in this video, Vince, Miami doesn't play either one of them. No, exactly. It, it, let, moving forward, they already played Clemson, right? They already yeah. lost to Clemson. They already played that game. But right. moving forward, they don't play Notre Dame, right? Right. So, uh, but I think Miami's going to lose another game. But to your point, Vince, until they do – you're talking about potentially being in a two-way tie for that, right. that second spot. Exactly. So you're not guaranteed a rematch right. with Clemson. And if that's Correct. the case, you're not making it into the, the final four. Correct. Because you're I don't not. think Notre Dame gets in at 10-1 and one without a re- – because then your question is who'd they beat. Exactly. Because no, an 8-0, 7-0, 8-0 Ohio State team, and if Ohio State does play all their games and they're 9-0 – a 9-0 Ohio State team is going to have better wins than a 10-1 and one Notre Dame team that, that, that didn't yeah. beat Clemson. Yeah, no so, doubt. And that's, why, that's where a loss can be – bad for Notre Dame. Plus, I think a yeah. loss to Clemson without Trevor Lawrence, without Tyler Davis, without Mike Jones Jr., without James Skolsky, without Justin Ross at, at Notre Dame Stadium would be devastating for Notre Dame. I, I think it's from a at perception this point, standpoint. Absolutely. Yeah, no, if I agree. they don't get the rematch. Now, if they get a rematch and they play in Charlotte, I think the title game's in Charlotte this year, correct? Yes. Um, it if is. they if they get the rematch and beat them with then 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 that will be huge, right? And and they'll be in the playoff. But to your point, if they lose to Clemson and then don't get a rematch in the ACC title game, you're gonna look at I mean, arguably the most disappointing ten and one season in the history of football. Because yep. how many teams will you're they have even be- beaten with a winning record? Right. I mean, right now you yeah, only have three to- opponents left on your schedule with a winning record. One of them's four and three Boston College. One of them is four and two North Carolina, who's already lost to Virginia and Florida State, who are both pretty below average. I think is that fair to say? <laughs> that's uh, fair to you know? say. And if Notre Dame beats them, that's three losses, right? And then you've got yeah. four and two Wake Forest. Is Wake Forest going to keep winning game week after week? You know, there's a chance you're going to have a bunch of 500 or worse teams on your on your docket, and so much for yeah. the whole join a conference to play a real schedule nonsense that we yeah, heard for a long time. That's a whole other conversation um, too. You know, so Notre Dame's schedule is a whole lot different with no Wisconsin and USC yeah. on it, yeah. and, and and now you get to play on these mediocre ACC teams because now you're you're Clemson, which is what Clemson's been struggling with, you know, for, yeah, for so yeah. long, which is why they sure. They, try usually to schedule a Texas A&M and Auburn a Georgia right a team like that along with playing South Carolina in the year so you have to win this game to get any kind of respect uh because because yep. as you said Vince if they lose this game it's not a guarantee that they're going to make it to the ACC title game I think they would correct I think I just don't believe Miami too. getting high enough in that, that yeah. computer ranking because Notre Dame's number four you know, let's say Notre now the only the only thing that could change it is if Notre Dame gets spanked yeah, like like Miami got spanked, but I don't see a scenario in which Miami would be able to leapfrog Notre Dame in any in any kind of scenario uh, with with Notre Dame losing a, a competitive game to Clemson. Yeah, I I just don't like it in the hands of a computer. Right. I just don't. You know what I'm saying? So I oh yeah, hey, Notre Dame I was alive during the BCS destiny. era. Yeah, I hate yeah. I hate yeah, I don't like for. computers determining that. No, absolutely, I don't either. I don't either. So you know. Those are our predictions. We're both mm-hmm. predicting Notre Dame to win this game. We're both predicting a close game, although it could go either way. Mm-hmm. Uh, bottom line is it's going to be a good football game, and It'll I think we both game. can agree on that, and uh, we're looking to forward be. to it. It needs yeah, to be. It does. It absolutely does. So make sure you stay locked into irishbreakdown.com. Make sure you stay locked into our YouTube uh, page. Hit that subscribe button so that you get all the awesome videos. Yeah, there it is right there. Go get it. And uh, we'll be bringing you all kinds of new content from here on out. And uh, we are so looking forward to it. 
and we are looking forward to this game. So make sure you stay tuned in, stay locked in, and we will talk to you next time.